Hey everybody, we're here. We're on to chapter three of Luke. Uh, I guess uh, I will give you an update about the tree. Uh, it is now underneath another tree. I'll get you a picture after we read here. Stay tuned. Why not? And this, I, I had told you about the genealogy of Jesus Christ yesterday before chapter two. I had brain fog. Uh, it was actually chapter three, and I think I covered that in the middle of it, but my apologies. I've known that chapter two was the Christmas story. It just, I was excited because I had been listening to, I found Johnny Cash reading the Bible on YouTube, and while I'm at work doing everything, I'm allowed to have an earbud in. So I listen to praise and worship music, I listen to sermons, and I listen, I've been listening to Johnny Cash read the Bible. And it, it just clicked and it made me think of it. And where I had listened to the whole book of Luke, I, I got the chapters confused. My apologies. All that matters is it is here. And it's being read today. Huh. Now, chapter 3 has a caption above it. This is the Gospel of Luke. And uh, it does have a caption above it. It says, The Preaching of John the Baptist. We're going to get a drink, like we always do, to wet in our whistle. And to get some strawberry flavor. <sighs> That's neat. There's a little notation. This is a study Bible that of my dad's that I've been reading out of lately. I gotta watch how I hold it up because a lot of papers will fall out. Oh, okay. There's little like icons to the side that explain things. Like there's a, a set of keys outside of chapter two, verse 52. And it, uh, the caption down here in the study Bible is the humanity of Christ. But in chapter 3, verse 1, there's a description here, and it has an icon. And I think it's because it's the it's the, the ruler of the time, the Caesar of the time. Because that will date everything for us. And it says, Tiberius Caesar. Uh, we may read that after we read the chapter. I'm not sure yet, but it's in there. It's neat. I thought it was cool. All right. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being Tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Eturia, and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias, and Tetrarch of Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priest, the word of God, came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to the baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to the flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits, any time you see the word therefore in the Bible. What do you do? You look, you study, and you read to see why it is there for. Being forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of these trees. Every tree Therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Symbolism there. 
Do we need to read that again? Show. And now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth for good fruit is hewn down. So trees that do not bring good fruit gets hewn down. If you don't have good fruit, yeek. It's kind of obvious, huh? And cast into the fire. What is that a symbol of? Symbolism, symbolism of. Think that every second. Not good fruit. You are hewn down and cast into the fire. So. In your flesh, if you are not saved and you do not have the good fruit, you're not perfect, you're not, you've not received the atoning grace of the blood of Jesus Christ through salvation through him or repentance, then you will be cast into the fire. Good symbolism there, because that's what happens in the day of judgment. The, God is not short on symbolism anywhere throughout this Bible and throughout the Holy Word, not this Bible in particular, but throughout the Word of Whew, that's good. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answereth, and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Share one to another, in other words. If you have an abundance, be a blessing to those who don't. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact, no more than that which is appointed you. Now, what do they mean by publicans? A lot of people will wonder what this words. This ain't short for Republican. This, a publican, where he's telling to to take only that which they are owed, they are the, the tax collectors, basically. Uh, at least that's the way I'm reading it here, or somebody who has something owed to them. They are not, whenever they ask what he, they are to do, he tells them, you should not take more than you're owed. Only take what is owed to you. Because back then there was a, a thing where tax collectors would go about, and they were hated by a lot of people and seen as derogatory or, or, or looked down upon because they wouldn't just take what was owed, they would take more than was owed because they were allowed to keep from the owed amount to what is what they took. That extra was theirs. They kept it. That's how they were so blessed. Uh, is a, not really a good term, but that's how they received the, the luxuries that they had. That's a better word. And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. Verse 14. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. That's a difficult one for all of us. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. Tells him right there he ain't the Messiah. He ain't the Christ. I cometh, or one, but one mightier than I cometh. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Latchet, clasp of the sandals they wear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable, 
and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. The Herod, the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother, Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. John, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. This is when John baptizes Jesus. You've got Jesus being baptized, when he's baptized. You've got the Holy Spirit being in the shape of a dove coming down, and you've got God speaking, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So you've got the thrice holy God of the universe all right there at one time when Jesus is baptized on earth. You've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. God in heaven, God in flesh, and God in us. The three parts of the triune God of the universe. The Holy Trinity. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. This is where it gets good. All right, here we go. The genealogy of Jesus. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Notice they said about 30 years of age, which this is Luke. Usually he is right on top of complete details. He just says about 30 years of age. Being as was supposed. That means they assume he was around 30 years of age. They don't have the actual year. <laughs> the son of Joseph, Jesus is the son of Joseph, we're counting backwards through the genealogy. We're going from Jesus back to Adam. Which was the son of Heli. Which was the son of Methat. Or Methat. Which was the son of Levi. Which was the son of Melchi. Which was the son of Janna. Which was the son of Joseph. Second Joseph in the line. I wonder if that's the Joseph with the, with the coat of many colors. I don't know. If somebody knows, leave it down below. Which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Esli, which was the son of Nagai, which was the son of Moth, which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Semai, which was the son of Joseph, third Joseph, which was the son of Judah which was the son of Joanna. No, this is something I'm just noticing here. Now, is this Joanna a female? Because throughout here, everything you see through the lineage so far has all been male. Now we get to the name of Joanna. Was it a guy or was it female? We know Joanna as a feminine name. Yes, there are only two genders. Sorry if that gets me a strike. They are male and they are female. Okay. Wait, no, here we go. Joanna, we know it is a feminine name. Let's keep reading. I guess I shouldn't have stopped, should I? We're going to start over. Which uh, Judah, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of of Risa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Silithiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Emodam, which was the son of Ur, 
which was the son of Jose, or Jose, which was the son of Eliezer, which was the son of Joram, which was the son of Mattat, which was the, that is the, no, that is Mattat, that is not Mattatius. Okay. Which was the son of Levi, a Levite. Which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, fourth Joseph in the line, which was the son of Jonah, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Malaya, which was the son of Menah, which was the son of Mattatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. We know who David is. So does Goliath. Which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nashem, which was the son of Aminadab, which was the son of Ram, which was the son of Hezron, which was the son of Perez, which was the son of Judah. which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Terah, which was the son of Nahor, which was the son of Serug, which was the son of Ragu, or Ragau, however you want to enunciate that, which was the son of Peleg, which was the son of Eber, which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxadad, or Arphaxad, which was the son of Sim, which was the son of Noah, we know who Noah is, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, and we, we've heard of Methuselah over time, which was the son of Enoch, we've heard of Enoch as well, Someone asked me a question about the book of Enoch. Sorry, never read it. It's not part of the canonized version of the Bible. Not saying it's good, not saying it's bad, just saying it wasn't chosen as the part of the Word of God. It is, a good, it is history, though. Which was the son of Jared, which is a normal name and with all these names, ain't it? Which was the son of Mahalalil? which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which we know who he was the son of, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of, capital G, God. Chapter 3 of Luke. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, to thank you for the blessing that you give us and yet you gave us with your word, Lord. We thank you for having a historian someone with the detail oriented mindset like luke to be able to put the whole genealogy from jesus christ all the way through to the another third of the thrice holy god of the triune god of the universe in god the father we thank you lord for taking us through that whole genealogy we praise you, Lord, and we love you. Allow us to have a continue to have an amazing day, Lord, and just be with all of our church services throughout the rest of the week and be with the revival going on in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, Lord, that anybody who can make it there will make it there. Anybody who can watch online will watch online. They'll watch which just, uh, just with open mind and, and clear thoughts and allowing discernment to come in and for your true word to be spoken in the manner that you want it spoke, Lord. Not a single one of us that read this Bible or read it out loud or put ourselves out there or any of the preachers, the teachers, the bishops, whatever term you want to use for going forth and telling, going forth and proclaiming, whatever term you want to use for it, Lord, pastor, I don't care what term you want to use. A teacher is a preacher. If you preach, you teach. 
So we just pray, Lord, for you to just watch over them and bless them. That they will just know, learn the word and just be, just have the discernment to teach it in the way that you meant for it to be taught. There are going to be things that some people are going to read and just going to have a difference of opinion because they may look at it through a traditional lens or through a denominational lens, Lord. But what I, all I ever ask for you is for me just to know what this means. It's not about what denomination or social drinking or not social drinking, but coffee drinking social club. I got it tank, tongue tied there, but there are some denominations that are social drinkers. Lord, we know that alcohol is not prohibited in the word. I don't drink, but we know you all did. We know that it, the wine of the Bible was actual wine because it talks about it here. It talks about the good wine at the wedding whenever Jesus performed his first miracle. It speaks about how they come out and they said, usually people use the good wine at first and save the worst wine for the end after people have gotten sloshed or drunk. But the wine that Jesus performed the miracle with became the good wine, which tells you right then and there that it was alcoholic. It was for a minute. Now, I don't drink, and I have no desire to drink, and I, but, and I know you teach against being a drunkard, but anywhere in the Bible, it does not teach about drinking wine, just having a drink. It only teaches about the excess. Exactly the same as it teaches about the excess of food. There's going to be a ton of religious traditionalists and denominationalists that will want to harp and beat a dead horse over alcohol. But they're not going to say a single word about their gluttony. So don't ever allow me to be that person, Lord. It just, just come upon me and just give me the discernment not to be like that. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. We thank you for everything. I have no clue why that popped in my head to pray about, but maybe there's somebody watching that was wondering about that right there. All I can tell you is, yes, they drink alcohol in the Bible. Yes, it does teach against being drunkard. Yes, it does teach about the excess. No, it does not say all alcohol is wrong. That's just what the Bible says. You can read it through a denominational lens or a traditional lens all you want. I choose not to drink because I, for me, to me, it's a waste of money. Uh, I, I feel like I can better suit or be a better steward of the money you have provided me and blessed me with, Lord, as opposed to just putting that into my body. But then again, would it be any different than the soda pop that a lot of people put into their body? Because that's a lot more chemical than what the alcohol is in the alcohol. And it does destroy the body just as much, just not as fast. But we love you, Lord, and we praise you. We thank you for everything. Allow us not to just be judgmental, but call it how you call it in the Bible. It's not about us. It's not about whether we agree or disagree. Allow us to keep true to the core tenets of the, the Christian faith and how we are able to come to you through Jesus Christ. You do have the virgin birth. You have the perfect sinless life. You have the death and burial. You have the resurrection. And you have the only way that we will ever get to the Father in heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody gets to the Father but through him. For anybody that might say that that's exclusionary, it is not. Because, let's go to John 3, 16 and 3, 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Let's go to the next verse. You just got the heart of God. Let's give you the reason for why he poured out his heart. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through his son or through him might be saved he poured his heart out and he gave away for every single person to have 
that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. But he also loves us so much for God so loved that he also gave us free will. He gave us the ability to choose for ourselves because he loves us that much. Now people will get confused with predestination and do all the weird stuff like that. But here's all that means. God gave us free will. We have the free ability to choose. It's just God's already seen the beginning and the end. It's a movie. Look at it this way. Look at it like a movie. He's already seen it. He's already watched it. He already knows whether we will choose or we won't choose. But he does not stop us from the choice that we choose. He just already knows which one we're going to make. He already knows our choice. And my choice is to be with him. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I choose you. I choose to be with you. I love you. I praise you. And I pray that anyone that don't know you can just come and go, I repent of my sins. I want to change. I want to grow in you. I know that you died for me. I know that I can't achieve it on my own. But through you, through your atoning blood, through your sacrifice, you can wash away every one of my sins, make me white as snow, cast away every one of my sins as far as the east is from the west. I love you, Lord, and I thank you. And I pray for those who don't know you, that maybe that they might one day find you and accept you. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. All right, everybody. They are over there sawing along on their tree, so you'll get to see the two they got down. But I'm going to go ahead and I'll send, I'll go over and record a little bit here. I'll hit pause, get out of the truck, and go record it. That way you can see the two trees. He's got his sons out, so I'm not sure he'll want that. But.